The United States Supreme Court responding just a short while ago to an extraordinary request by the special counsel Jack Smith in the criminal prosecution of Donald Trump. CNN's chief legal affairs correspondent Paula Reed is here with us in the Situation Room. Paula, tell us more about what the Supreme Court has agreed to do and why Smith's request is a very big deal. Yeah, this today was an aggressive move by the special counsel to try to get the election subversion case to trial before the November 2024 election. The special counsel is asking the Supreme Court to decide two questions. One, is Trump immune from prosecution or is he protected from prosecution because of potential double jeopardy because he was impeached but not convicted on similar charges? Now, the special counsel doesn't think either one applies, but they want the Supreme Court to decide this issue so that that trial that's expected to go in March of next year does not get delayed. Because Trump is litigating these very legitimate questions, but that litigation takes time. It could take months, maybe even over a year, for questions like this to move through the appellate process and potentially get to the Supreme Court. So the special counsel is saying it is in the public interest for the Supreme Court to just take up these questions and give them an answer now. They're relying on precedent from the Nixon Watergate investigations where the court was able to decide some discrete issues very quickly. And now we know we'll get an answer as to whether they are going to take up this case, hopefully pretty quickly here. Again, they're not saying they will take it up, but they're saying they will give us an answer on whether they will answer these questions pretty quickly. Have we heard, Paula, anything yet from Trump's lawyers about this, uh, this case? We have. We got a lengthy statement that repeats a lot of their talking points, arguing that this prosecution is election interference, uh, directly attacking the special counsel. Look, all of that is allowed, even though he is subject to a gag order. He is entitled to attack President Biden, special counsel Jack Smith. So what we're hearing, you know, more of the same. But while they're arguing that this is an attempt to interfere in the election and attack his supporters, the special counsel argues that it is imperative that voters see the resolution of this trial before they cast their votes next this year. This is a big deal indeed, all right, guy. Paula, stay with us. I don't want you to go too far away. I also want to bring in our legal and Supreme Court analysts to discuss what's going on. And Laura, let me start with you. Uh, what do you make of today's filing from the Justice Department Special Counsel Jack Smith? I think it's a very smart move by Jack Smith to preempt the inevitable, which is the delay tax that will be used here. Remember, as Paula identified, this could take a very long time to get to the appellate court and the Supreme Court to review it. It could go into the following Supreme Court term, and we are less than 100, 300 I mean, days away from a presidential election. I think 332, maybe, if I'm counting the numbers right. It's important to get this answer because it takes away the defenses of Donald Trump at a trial. If he were to be able to get to the trial, go through the entire voir dire process, all the motions, and then say, actually, I'm immune from any of this sort of prosecution, it would delay to the point of absurdity any sort of pursuit of justice. And that's, of course, with his due process rights intact, the presumption of innocence that obviously he's afforded. But to get this taken care of now, is he essentially able to be prosecuted on something like this, and it goes back to that Nixon question. If the president does it, it's not illegal. Are we back here again? They want to resolve it once and for all. Well, Joan Biscupi, you're our senior Supreme Court analyst. What do you read between the lines as far as the Supreme Court decision? Well, they're taking it very seriously. The request just came in this morning. Just about three minutes ago, the justices had said, yes, they will at least put it on an expedited schedule. They've given uh, the Trump lawyers to until December 20th to respond. That's only two days different than what Jack Smith had asked for. He had asked for December 18th. So they're actually following the game plan so far that Jack Smith has put forward. Now, just think of this Supreme Court. This is a Supreme Court that managed to avoid a lot of the controversy during 2020. It rejected baseless claims from Donald Trump's allies about the election results stayed out of it. Every case it's ever handled with Donald Trump, whether on his policy or on his personal uh, tax dealings, has always been fraught. So they're probably not looking at this with eagerness, but they know that this is a case that this question has never been decided. And that was the point of Jack Smith's petition, that eventually the Supreme Court's going to have to decide if a former president or a president uh, can be immune from criminal prosecution for actions taken while in office, which is exactly what Donald Trump is asserting. So I think, I frankly think this is a really strong case that Jack Smith has put forward, and I think that it will get 
it's get already getting close Supreme Court attention, and we will probably know in just a matter of weeks whether they grant this petition. It will be a huge decision indeed. Uh, should the former president, do you think, at all be worried about this? Um, I think so, for the for the number of reasons that we've sort of talked about here. Now, again, a word on timing, and that's the that's sort of uh, the key point here. Were this process to go uh, through the normal process, uh, were the case to go through the normal process, it would be number one, it would first be appealed to a court of appeals, then the losing party would have the ability to appeal that to the full court of appeals, and then they'd have the ability to appeal that to the Supreme Court. That could have been months, if not, frankly, years of appeals. And so it was a very savvy move by Jack Smith to try to get this. Now, I I think it's safe to say that a litigant would not attempt uh, to go to the Supreme Court unless they felt quite confident in the strength of the arguments and the strength of the case they're bringing. And let's look very quickly at the two things that they're saying. Number one, this question of whether the actions at issue were in the scope of the president's official duties. There's an argument that he's a candidate for office, not a president of the United States. Yes, he held the title of president, but this was in furtherance of his candidacy. So you could probably uh, resolve that pretty quickly. Then on this double, double jeopardy question, it's also not, not a, a stellar argument in that the point of impeachment is to, is to protect the integrity of the presidency. The point of prosecuting someone is to send them to jail. They're two very different things. And, you know, look, the president, the former president is entitled to make the arguments that he wishes, but these just aren't great arguments. And I think uh, it, it all speaks to the strength of Jack Smith's and the, and the special prosecutor's hands here. And by the way, the legislative branch is the one that does the impeachment, right. right? We're talking about the executive branch is who handles criminal prosecution. So to invoke double jeopardy because you've had a political reaction to what you've done. And remember Senator Mitch McConnell at the time making the comments of, you know, he wasn't going to support the conviction because we want that to go up with the courts and said they knew then that was a totally different issue. And, and you're just saying, you know, there's so many lawyers on this panel here. We're <laughs> lawyering you to death, Wolf. But, um, but just to be clear, when we speak about double jeopardy, you're speaking about this idea in the Constitution that you can't be tried twice for the same offense. If Jack Smith were to, or the special counsel were to prosecute someone for something, they couldn't then prosecute them again for the same crime a week later. The president's making the argument that, well, because I was impeached, you can't then prosecute me for the same conduct. That's just not, I think, I'm not a judge, yeah. that's, <laughs> but I, that's just not what the, what the Constitution Laura, says. you're here. I want to get your thoughts. Uh, Rudy Giuliani's trial right now that's mm -hmm. beginning, a uh, jury selection going on to determine damages for defaming two of Georgia's 2020 election workers, and, and we all remember Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss. Uh, I want our viewers to listen to this. Listen to this tape earlier in the day of Ruby Freeman and Shea Freeman Moss and one other gentleman quite obviously surreptitiously passing around USB ports as if they're vials of heroin or cocaine. I mean, it's, our it's, it's obvious to anyone who's a criminal investigator or prosecutor, they are engaged in surreptitious illegal activity again that day. What can you tell us about the legal peril that Giuliani is facing right now? Well, first, what was obvious is they were handing over ginger mints to one another, not heroin, not crack, not USB drives, ginger mints. But the entire tactic there was to try to undermine their credibility and use them as political pawns, which is what he's paying dearly for now. The fact that he's already got the defamation part already decided means that you're now on to how expensive will it be for the mistake that you have made or the action that you have taken place here. They are not public figures. There's not going to be this elevated decision about whether they could be defamed and what their criteria was. So now it's about how their lives have been altered drastically. You have one already saying that she's uncomfortable having her name be said in public for fear of being harmed in some way. And this is about the knowing information. Now, of course, he's very, been very consistent and said, I was basing this on what I thought to be the truth, whether it was not true or not, not my issue here. This is a very extraordinary case for every election worker going forward. It certainly is, and we will watch it very closely. Uh, to everybody, thank you very much. Laura will, of course, be back 11 p.m. Eastern later tonight for her show, Laura Coates Live. That's the name of the show.